Here I'm going to talk about a tool called Through Curve Mesh. Very powerful surfacing tool. It's similar to the Studio Surface, but there's additional functionality within that I'm going to cover now, and then I'll eventually get into the other tools within Through Curve Mesh as well as Studio Surface. One thing that Through Curve Mesh allows you to do is use a point as one of the primary curves. So the mesh is looking for four sides at a minimum. You can pick multiple primary curves, so if you have several curves along in a primary, and then you also pick several cross curves coming across in the opposite direction from the primaries. So you can literally pick hundreds of primaries and cross curves. For this, I'm just going to have two primaries and two cross curves. So for my first primary curve, I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to select my middle mouse button to move on to the next primary curve. You can see here down here it says select primary curve. So for this next primary curve I'm going to select this point. Now this is one of the only tools that will allow you to specify a point to make a surface up to. Now that I specified my point I'm going to come to cross curves. First cross curve is this curve middle mouse button march to the next. This is my second cross curve. Now, down here I have this set to first primary. I'm going to pick a face for the tangency to be applied across to. As soon as I pick that, you'll notice that my surface goes in. The surface looks really nice, it's fairly clean, but some warnings. Now, one of the dangers of creating a triangular surface, you know, there's other tools that allow you to create triangular surfaces, such fill is another one of those tools, is that by doing so, what ends up happening, if I look at the control points, let me go to analysis, select this, and show poles, you'll see A, how complex this surface is, and you'll also notice that the control points all come down and merge at that one tip. What this is telling me is that all of these controls are bunching up in this one little localized area. This causes surfaces to have odd minimum radius you don't know what's going on in these surfaces. So let me pick this and show poles. Let me turn that off. What I'm going to do next is I want to analyze this. So I'm going to go into face curvature, select my surface. Once my surface is selected, I'm going to use a Gaussian method. And I'm going to show a contour as well as a color plot so you can get an idea of how the colors are plotting across this. Next, I'm going to come down and display resolution. Let me go to super fine to clean this up a little bit. This is just basically how the, uh, clean the color map looks going across from one to the other. And then I have a range, scaling, area, linear. If I go to linear and just take a look at this, what you'll notice is pretty much all of my analysis has jumped down to this one area. This is telling me that my surface is now basically relatively flat over here and there's tons of curvature in this tiny little area. If I were to go in and adjust my range on my scaling, my center range is, you can start seeing this surface Walking back, you can see odd little creases and odd shapes going on just in this one very small localized area. Why is this important? Well, if I'm trying to run a ball cutter of a certain size through this area, the ball cutter is unable to cut that. Now, let me cancel out. I'm going to go into a tool called Local Radius. I'm going to pick this surface. What I want to show is coordinates, 
turn this around. Let me go to a wireframe view so we can see this without having to turn it around. I'm going to go to coordinates. I'm going to show the minimum radius. And I want a minimum maximum radius tangent. I want to talk about uh, the what the maximum radius value and the minimum radius value are all about. So on that surface, you have your basic UV direction. What happens with this is it cuts a section into two directions to determine the minimum radius and the maximum radius at that point. So at this point, the minimum radius is 102. So if I were to draw a surface normal and cut radially all around this, where is my min and where is my max? So in my minimum direction, this way, it's 102. In my maximum, in this direction, 181. So I can show my minimum and maximum radius value on the U and V of, the, of that point as well. So I have a U flow line and a V flow line. So this is the value this is the min max true value at that point. Now I'm going to move this to this area where we saw some very odd things happening. Now what you'll notice is as I get closer to this point I'm going to get to some very very small radii value. You can see here what looks like a very broad flat surface has 4, 3, uh, 2. If I'm using a 25 millimeter ball this, it's going to start jumping and get real jittery in this corner unless the NC guy cleans this up, which means that whatever they do in this area is not going to be truly representative because this cannot be machined. You may be able to do a 3D print of it, uh, but it'll look awkward, look funny, because you're going from such a large maximum radius to um, such a small minimum radius in a very, very short distance, very short direction. Select OK. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show reflection lines on the surface. We'll go to black and white. And as you can see, let me go to super fine. Let me go ultra fine. What the heck? Really make it look pretty. And there is this convergence of all of those lines coming into this corner. So this is causing a distortion in the surface as well as it transition and comes down to the point. So this method of creating a surface, although it's very possible, you should be very, very leery about doing it. Maybe you should take a step back and understand how you can build the surface without having to have a, a, a triangular point coming in and uh, creating these odd little discrepancies in the surface. What you may do is you may actually have a section curve over here that you bridge off to and then you lay these curves down and split away the portion of the surface you no longer need. That way you don't get this type of a result. So through curve mesh one of the primaries can go up to a point. I do not recommend it. I strongly uh, do not recommend using it unless it's an absolute necessary tool. Now if you're building a nose cone, maybe you have several closed off profiles and you're going up to a point to form a nose cone, then that may be something that you can do. Um, something on uh, aerospace or whatever may not have truly circular sections and you may have several sections as you're going like on an airplane going up to that cone that uh, may be a little flatter on one side and you have three or four or five sections to fill that nose cone and it eventually comes to a point this may be something applicable for that but uh, it's very limited in use and you should be very cautious when using it